Well, hello. Most of you will be familiar with uh, Paul and me being uh, regional ministers, but you may also know that we've both been uh, ministers of local churches and done that for a good number of years. And also, of course, we work with local churches. And so as we come to the end of the lockdown period, uh, we want to think about what it means as a local minister and to do that through the lens of a local, local minister in terms of thinking about what church might look like, particularly once we pass the initial stages of lockdown. So, Paul, get us thinking about some of the issues you feel we need to be addressing or actions we need to take even now. Uh, enjoy uh, what we still have. Um, I think it's important to think ahead to uh, um, work out how we can move from intentions into actions and, and, and how we're going to make uh, maybe good ideas become a reality. Uh, I think it's good now to, to be planning, but planning flexibly because we still don't know quite what the process is going to be around the end of lockdown. Yeah, I, I think that's helpful. I like the issue of flexibility, not quite knowing uh, do. As, as what, what, how things will work out. Um, I also think it's going to be really important to, to think and pray about some of these issues and to be aware of the pastoral concerns that people have. Um, and I just wonder whether you have a view about that, the kind of issues that people might be facing in the pastoral level. Well, John, you're a good pastor first and foremost, so uh, that, that, that's right of you to, to bring that first. Um, I would say uh, we need to be listening well to those that, that have our attention, but also those that don't have our attention, those that maybe we, we have lost during the lockdown, uh, then we may have lost people. I know churches with refugees and asylum seekers have lost touch with a lot of those folk. We need to try and gather back in, uh, connect back in with those that we lost, pick up the concerns. I would also want to say as a mission enabler, we need to missionally do the pastoral piece as well and listen to our communities, listen to those who have been key workers, listen to those who who've really struggle with the lockdown uh, and see what needs are still there that we can be responding to. I think that's really helpful. I think there are two hands that go together there uh, in the sense of doing missions through the awareness and care of others, both in the church and beyond, showing the, the love of God in that way. I suspect there will be people who will still be anxious and, and, and fearful and, and maybe some who are grieving and maybe even a bit of a post lockdown trauma that people may need to walk, work through. But in helping them uh, to work through that, um, what would you like to see church actually look like? What, for instance, how would you like to see, see uh, worship change, if at all? Well, I would hope that we've discovered more about worship being something that we do 24-7 and not just what's about when we come together uh, in a building and that the, the being scattered has helped us to rediscover worship in the whole of life. I think that's really important and I would like to see that continue and somehow that we find ways of uh, uh, helping people to continue to live that out and not just think it, all our worship is what happens once for an hour on a Sunday. Uh, and there are lots of ways we can do that. We can uh, be um, referring more uh, actively to, to what we've been doing during the week when we gather on Sundays, sharing testimonies, uh, using images of things that we've seen and, and connected with, helping people to do that piece of encountering God in the everyday. That's one, one way I think we can do yeah. it. Elaine. Well, how are you going to pastor people into a new normal, particularly those that want, want the old normal? Who are you asking that to, me or John? Well, probably you. <laughs> <laughs> you were speaking. <laughs> she was prompted by you. Okay. I'm well, by you, Paul. Yeah. Because but his is... expectations will be different, won't they? And and there will be a whole spectrum. It's not just there's a few wanting one thing and a few wanting another alternative. So there will have to be a certain amount of um, negotiation, uh, listening, uh, and and maybe some sections of church life will be pretty similar to what they were for, for the sake of those that value that and other parts of church life might be quite radically different and we need to somehow be able to have both hands I think my hope would be that church can be a bit broader in the way it expresses itself not just seeing one way of doing everything but 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 different ways uh, and, and having them alongside each other so for example uh, the, the the digital versus the actual uh, that we continue to do the digital stuff 
alongside the the gathering in in, in physical space as well i i think there's a very helpful question elaine and 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 that idea of you know, maybe having different expressions working together is good paul I'm, I'm conscious that you know i would have to journey with people um through their fears through their ex excitement about being back together again i'm conscious that i want to hold before me uh, what Paul talks about presenting people mature in Christ, so that's about discipleship that is worked out in worship and, and other ways. Um, I think we've rediscovered something about community. Um, we, we found different ways of doing community, uh, as it were, online. Uh, communities around are expressing support for the National Health Service and key workers and, and a sense of community there. Uh, so I'd want to work with a community in, in actually exploring what worship looks like. And it feels to me that should be a little less uh, upfront, a little less performance related and more community based, which will work out different in, the, in our smaller churches to our bigger churches. But actually, I think I want people to engage rather than to be recipients of the things we do in church. So how do we hold on to those people then that have engaged online that are not going to come into a church building yeah well i think there's a there's a couple of things there would be in my mind one is that actually we need to maintain a good uh, uh online presence but there may be gatherings that we could do in other places that are not in church or there may be specific and special types of occasions so where we can use church so we might want to use pubs or community centers yeah. as i wouldn't say halfway houses but as a place to explore worship in a different way that's um, that's engaging for people who thus far haven't uh, or haven't recently engaged in church. I mean, I think a missional question, I think, Paul, I mean, so I look to you as a missioner to give the, the, def the def definitive answer. Well, I can give you lots of answers. Uh, one example would be people have been connecting much more if they've been out walking uh, with the natural world. So, so let's look at ways we can bring people together in nature there's the forest church movement for example we can maybe learn something from them about how we uh, gather people and worship in 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 the outdoors uh, and and continue to enjoy the changing of the seasons uh, beyond mm. the spring that we've been living through i mean i think it's great to articulate ideas so i want to ask you what would you do yeah well that's what i would do that would be the one you do yeah, yeah okay. well that's one of the things I, I would do lots of things but that's one example yeah Okay. Other ways, I can give you other examples if you want. But Elaine, I was just thinking, what about more groups that meet in homes? Right. I think it's eminently sensible, really, because yeah. that to see worship. I mean, as a whole life thing, but actually expressed in 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 home, what we call home groups, or however you want to call them, other other small groups, whether in homes or anywhere else, and that, that worship should be there. Part of worship is, is, is teaching as well. Um, and I, I wonder if actually our teaching should be more interactive and engaging. The important thing for me is that people engage the word uh, uh, and uh, grow in Christ. So I think there's something very significant about that. So uh, no more sermons, John? Well, I think that's a real challenge to those of us who are preachers, Paul, and who enjoy the sound of our own voice. Um, and maybe don't necessarily enjoy the sound of others quite so much when they have to listen to them. Um, but actually, it's about engaging the word, not necessarily hearing someone preach. Coming back to your question, Elaine, I would say, missionally, thinking of the reality of where I've been, I've been getting to know people in my street. I'm sure that's been happening across all of our churches. So how do we continue to build on those relationships and that sense of growing community? And I would be looking to do things, initiate things within my street. Uh, I hope at some point, when we feel able to do this, we'll have some kind of end of lockdown party. We're, we're going to have a barbecue out on the green uh, and, and invite everybody from the street to share in that and, and, uh, and try and say, let's, let's continue to do things together. What would you like to do? Uh, and I don't think home group meetings is the level that people are at. That's not going to work. People aren't going to just come straight to home. They might come around for meals. Uh, and we can start from there. You have to start where people are at. And so, again, I think we've got to think in terms of those who are not Christians. What are they likely to want to do? What is going to be easy for them to do? What's the natural next step? Rather than getting into the old way, which is, oh, yes, we used to do Bible studies in our homes. Let's do that. Because I don't think that's quite where people are at. 
we need to find that out uh, as we as we get to know them and talk to them actually i think you need to do both because i think you need to build people up in their faith and however that works but also the, the mission or question is is engaging with people so actually i really like the idea of having a a community barbecue or party to celebrate the end of lockdown and maybe an act of memorial of, 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 of memorial as well for those who have passed away or those who have suffered um, or maybe a way of getting, engaging people in a reflective moment to think about the anxiety they've been through. So I think they're all good missional things, and I think I would want to to explore that as well. So yeah, I like the idea of memorial. Sorry, Elaine, up to you. Well, I was just going to say, as we bring our chat to a sort of close, how do you think um, people are going to feel about facing the future, church future? Yeah, that's a really good question. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would want, I mean, I'm, I'm an optimist. Uh, I mean, there will be some churches that, that might not be able to function as well. And uh, I know in some branches of the church, they are looking to have to close some congregations down once we come through this. And that might be a reality in one or two places. But I, I would hope that because we've made wider connections actually during this time, that, that somehow that that, that will feed into a, a, a more vibrant life, that, that we will also appreciate each other that much more when we see each other because we've been deprived of each other. There's some of the things that we've taken for granted will value more. Uh, I just want to say one more thing as well, that, which is the more prophetic uh, voice into the wider society. And I think the church has an opportunity and we should be doing this right now, not waiting till the end of lockdown, to speak to politicians, get in touch with your local MP. I would want to be saying to my local MP, you know, we've got in touch with nature. The planet's had a rest for uh, uh, a couple of months. Let's not just go back to the old way of, of carbon rich uh, uh, industry and investing into the old technologies. But let's reinvest into what's going to be for the future. Just as church, we want to reinvest into the future rather than just going back necessarily to the old ways. That should be happening in every area of life. And we should be encouraging that, modelling it ourselves, but also looking to others to do that and, 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 and challenging them that on that. Yeah, I think mean, I'd want to hold on to the idea that we're both a city on a hill and, and a community of God's people, that we actually need to, to speak out God's light and truth uh, to a wider world. Uh, but also we're, we're called to, to be community in Christ and to model community in Christ and bring people into that community, however that's expressed. And so I think, you know, the journey for me, if I was a local pastor, will be one you make not just with your leaders, but with everybody. So we walk together in exploring what it means to be disciples of Jesus Christ, uh, interacting together in, in worship uh, and in fellowship, that's more than a cup of tea, but actually really engaging in building one another up in Christ. It takes a whole village, uh, somebody once said to raise a child, it takes a whole church to disciple a person. And uh, similarly, uh, engaging in mission, which uh, takes our worship, takes our teaching, takes our understandings into the broader life of uh, our neighbourhood, our, our society, and, and speaks good news, but does it creatively. Great. Okay, well, thank you, Paul and Elaine. Uh, we entitled this 15 Minutes to Change the Church. Um, it is difficult to, to explore all the avenues of change, but we wanted to try and do it through the lens of a local pastor, and we hope you've, you find this helpful. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Elaine.